Hello everyone. We are now going to take the part three of fiber conjugation series of videos. Here we'll be talking about the original experiment done by Baker Nathan, what were his results. And we'll also be talking about the explanation suggested by him in his 1935 paper, which was published in the Journal of Organic Chemistry. We'll also be discussing here in brief about how he explained the dipole moment of certain other molecules and the tautomerization taking place in different molecules. So here in this video, we are having a brief discussion about the biography of Baker and Nathan. Menschutkin reaction is one interest, one related reaction, which is uh, which relates actually to the uh, origin of the Baker Nathan effect. Also, we'll be talking about here how he gave explanation. The rates were contrary to what uh, the beliefs by the time of the inductive effect and conjugation used to be. Some other observations also these people made. We'll be talking about that. And then what were suggestions given by Baker to explain those things and these applications we are going to see in these uh, subsequent slides. So <clears throat> this is about John William Baker. Unfortunately, we don't have any of his photo available in public domain. This is one of the book published by him. Uh, 19, 1898 to 1967 was his lifespan. And he was a PhD from Imperial College of London. Uh, he was supervised by uh, Thorpe and uh, Ingold. Ingold, which we have heard a lot about in CIP rules and some other places. He had done actually a great deal of work in the inductive effect, C.K. Ingold. And he had been a professor, reader at Leeds, University of Leeds uh, for about 27 years. And uh, he had published more than 100 papers and wrote some uh, books. He had worked actually on tautomerization as well, apart from hyperconjugation, which we might be less aware of. And uh, this is uh, Wilfred Samuel Nathan. His lifespan uh, was from 1910 to 1961. He had been working uh, with the John William Baker for uh, one year, nearly 1935, where he, uh, when uh, the, they have published their paper. And later he joined uh, some British Petroleum Company in 1936. He uh, never returned to the academy thereafter. Going to the uh, preface for the baker nathan effect, we have uh, got that reaction we called as Menschutkin reaction. We uh, remember there is an SN2 reaction. If you react any amine with this uh, alkyl halides, we get the substitution reaction which is taking place in SN2 fashion. Also, when we react three degree amines with the alkyl halides, this kind of tetra alkyl ammonium halides which are being formed, we are calling this is Menschutkin reaction. And uh, uh, this uh, para substituted benzyl halides were taken by Baker and Nathan and they reacted with the pyridine rather than taking, uh, taking a three degree amine. And then they investigated about the products what were being formed, how their rates of reaction were related. So this is uh, Menschutkin's reactions idea. And uh, Nikolai Menschutkin was a Russian chemist. It's him. <clears throat> The reaction what we know by his name is this one and we understand this nitrogen sloan pair attacking over here halogen being replaced we are getting tetraalkyl ammonium halides formed reaction was modified where we can rather than taking alkyl halide we can st also start taking as the benzyl halides uh, benzyl halides can also be undergoing sn2 reactions very much easily because of that stabilization of the transition state and we ultimately get these kinds of products in similar reaction, if we uh, go with the uh, reactivity of the benzyl halide, rather than taking this three degree amines, what Baker and Nathan had done, they uh, replaced that with the pyridine. And uh, we are seeing here that reaction in which SN2 reactions are taking place as per Menschutki reaction. If you modify that Menschutki reaction a little bit, what we get is we get uh, the reaction uh, which is uh, similar to uh, that Menschutkin reaction itself. But here there is one interesting thing what is happening. When we are substituting the para position of that benzyl halides, starting from hydrogen to methyl, ethyl, isopropyl or butyl groups. So uh, how those alkyl groups present in para position over this thing is modifying the rates of reaction. So this is uh, nitrogen which is attacking onto this benzyl halide. We are using this reaction in dry acetone. We understand acetone we are using to promote SN2 reactions as we have learned. 
So this kind of product formation is going to take place. But how this alkyl group R, what we have chosen over here, how this is modifying the rate of reaction was the matter of investigation by Baker and Nathan, what we will be seeing here in next slide. So what, what he uh, seen in the rate of the order for uh, these different reactions when that alkyl group on the para position is being substituted. The thing is, when we are getting uh, the substitution, the rate of reaction, what was expected, this expectations we are understanding with respect to inductive effect possibly because uh, there is no conjugation possible in these ethyl methyl propyl groups as a resonance we understand so with respect to inductive effect we could have expected the order to be t butyl should have been more reactive or the most reactive for all these uh, five four compounds what we could have chosen but the thing is the actual order was found it to be something completely different. In this actual order, methyl was found to be most reactive, contrary to the expectation that it should be just next after halogen, fourth in this series of five different groups. If you leave hydrogen as one of the groups, then the alkyl groups are four, methyl, ethyl, isopropyl, and butyl. So methyl was having the maximum reactivity. Why that would happen? This explanation was suggested by Baker and Nathan in the terms of some mechanism where those electrons in the methyl carbon hydrogen bonds are not localized. If you are saying those electrons were not localized or to quote these people, they actually said that the CH bond in these groups are appreciably less localized. When we are saying less localized, we are somehow referring to delocalization of the electrons present in carbon hydrogen bond. And if these electrons are being delocalized, we can think about something different would be happening towards methyl, ethyl, propyl, and t-butyl group in comparison to if we just keep thinking about the inductive effect. So when methyl group is present, the reactions, the rate of reactions are going to be highest. This is being related uh, by Baker and Nathan in their experiment that that electron releasing effect is coming from that alpha carbon hydrogen bonds from these alkyl groups and this thing is helping the carbon Br bond to be broken that we can say as an ionization of the bromine atom from the rest of the molecule. Uh, this is the reaction. So what Baker and Nathan are saying, when you have got more such carbon hydrogen bonds, because these electrons are delocalized, these electrons are less localized, means they are undergoing appreciable delocalization from their original position. So if they are getting delocalized, more such delocalization coming in carbon hydrogen bond, these more number of delocalizations will be possible over here because you have got more carbon hydrogen bond present at the alpha position. And as you keep going towards T butyl group, the number of carbon hydrogen bond onto the alpha position, this is the alpha position with respect to benzene ring. As the number of alpha carbon hydrogen bonds are going to change, the delocalization effect is, is being less, is, is becoming less and less subsequently. This is the thing what Baker and Nathan had explained by their, like they had basically suggested the possible explanation which we started calling as Baker-Nathan effect. And later we have started calling those terms as the hyperconjugation which is a relatively much inclusive term uh, which includes a number of other similar delocalizations taking place from either carbon hydrogen 
sigma bond or some pi bonds or in some cases even lone pairs in suitable situations where there are suitable anti-bonding orbitals available. So to sum up this Baker-Nathan effect, we are seeing here that when you are having three carbon alpha hydrogen bonds, you are having much greater electron delocalization effect in comparison to two alpha carbon hydrogen bonds. When we are replacing this whole group as a file, so only these two hydrogen carbon hydrogen bonds can be delocalized. When we are keeping isopropyl group, only one hydrogen can be delocalized. And in presence of T-butyl group, when R is equal to T-butyl, then the delocalization of the carbon hydrogen bond is not possible because there are not alpha hydrogens present. No alpha carbon hydrogen bonds are present. This is what we now relate as hyperconjugation. Initially, this was being called as the baker nathan effect. Right? Okay. So, uh, this is going to be relatively very, very weak. Uh, because when we uh, think about the conjugation, conjugation electronic delocalization is very uh, good and this is a very weak delocalization of electrons when hyperconjugation we are comparing. We will be seeing that because uh, in the uh, applications and the results when these properties are getting modified due to hyperconjugation effect, we can see there. If we have got a similar situation, if there is a conjugation, we see much larger effect in the properties, much greater change in the properties being associated will be there. And in hyperconjugation, the difference in the properties does arise, but this difference is rather smaller if you compare it with the hyperconjugation. Now we are going to uh, see some of the data which was uh, quoted by William and uh, that Baker and Nathan in their experiment when they were doing this reaction for aryl hyperconjugated systems. Basically, they have chosen some compound where two methyl rings were attached and there was one uh, alkyl group CHCl. This thing was present. This reactivity of Cl was getting modified when one of the para position of this phenyl group was substituted by this alkyl group. Over here, when we are talking about this alkyl group, the alkyl groups were basically uh, changed from hydrogen to T-butyl as we have seen earlier. And in his experiment, he uh, used this 80% uh, was acetone, 20% was water. Temperature was zero degrees Celsius. And here is the data, what they reported. They have done the calculation about the rate constant K and also about the activation energy Ea. Uh, we have got this brief idea that when activation energy is going to increase, then the rate of reactions is going to continuously decrease. Uh, there is uh, one expression what we might have seen if we have learned chemical bonding. Uh, some of one of you might, uh, many of you might have not actually learned the chemical bonding maybe at this point of time and write that expression. Rate constant K is known to be equal to a that is a constant we call that Arrhenius constant that depends somehow on the collision frequency not exactly collision frequency it relates to the collision frequency and then there is a term of exponent of minus Ea by Rt. So if uh, activation energy we can see here is having the negative term so if activation energy is going to uh, decrease then this whole term is basically going to increase and that is how the rate constant k would be increasing. So we can see here the activation energy over here is going to continuously increase. That means the rate constant and hence the rate reaction will be continuously decreasing. And this change, small changes over here can be associated with quite bigger changes over there because there is an exponential term over here in the expression. We now will be seeing uh, this data in the form of this uh, representation of a graph. Here we can uh, see how this rate constant or the rate of reaction is decreasing when we are going from methyl to the hydrogen. And this was the curve in the activation energy, which was rather a smaller curve. This is in the terms of the uh, activation energy is in the terms of basically kilocalories. And over here, the rate constant is in the terms of 10 h to power. Six. Basically, there's a minus six would have been the multiplication term over there. 
and uh, this data uh, to to correlate with this data we have done basically multiplication by 10 over here whatever this data is we should say this is going to be kilocalories per mole multiplied by 10 is to power minus 1 because we have here the value was 18.9 we have written here 189 to see that relative change more clearly fine so this data is going to tell us that methyl group is going to have the greatest rate of reaction and hydrogen is going to have the smallest this data is again coming from the baker nathan's experiment what they have suggested what they have done and this is what they gave us the conclusion that methyl group is going to have the greatest effect on the reactivity on the para position on if they are in para position then the benzylic that halogen atom is getting ionized very easily in much effective manner okay now uh, we are going to see how this baker nathan effect is also in position to explain the other properties like uh, we can say this is going to explain the uh, tautomerization in, in different cases cyanohydrin formation also it can be explained dipole moments also we can be in position to explain cyanohydrins we'll be seeing as we might have seen in the aldehydes and ketones tautomerization in azomethane systems and some other kind of systems also was studied uh, when hydrogen atoms are basically uh, getting involved in the tautomerization process we call this sometimes as prototropy that stands for proton tropy that uh, tropism of proton basically that translates into english as the movement of hydrogen so here we have got one uh, acidic hydrogen which is being present in HO methane with this nitrogen double bond nitrogen and there is one CH group present. Here also the order was found to be uh, the same. Uh, uh, not same, the um, methyl group when this is present, this rate of tautomerization is going to be the smallest, the other way around in terms of the rate of reaction. So here this retardation effect, what is coming from the para position, methyl group is having greater than any of the other alkyl groups. So if you see this structure of these compounds, then we can go for the detailed explanation. So this is a, a diazomethane systems. We have got nitrogen double bond carbon. So this hydrogen atom basically is going to move from this position over to here. And this rate of the exchange here, we are talking about the rates of the reaction. K1 can be the reaction, the forward reaction. K2 can be the rate of rate constant in the backward reaction. So when we are going to modify the nature of this alkyl group present under the para position, we are going to have the rates of reactions getting changed. And this time, when we are having here more the number of carbon hydrogen atoms, then the situation is going to be quite different. Let us say here we have got one hydrogen atom and there was one carbon atom. Now what is happening? This hydrogen is going to put here more and more negative charges so this hydrogen is going to be less uh, likely to be accepting electrons so because if those hydrogens were getting tautomerized if this hydrogen is undergoing tautomerization these electrons will be shifting in that direction probably and then if you are going to automerization or hyperconjugation from the from because of hyperconjugation this would also be putting the same kind of effect here we can think there will be too much of the electron clouding electron uh, richness appearing this reason is going to be too much electron rich so the shifting of this carbon hydrogen bond in this prototropy over this hydrogen being shifted over there can be taking place if the electrons from this side the electrons from this side are not going to be moving over here if these electrons are moving over here to a much greater extent then this carbon hydrogen bond shifting is not going to happen because that shifting when it is taking place this carbon hydrogen bond is moving over there and this carbon hydrogen bond is being replaced by one carbon hydrogen system we can possibly write that that uh, this hydrogen which was present over here if this tautomerization is taking place it can be coming over here and this bond which was present earlier over here this bond can be moving on to this carbon hydrogen so that hydrogen atom what we can see is undergoing tautomerization which is undergoing prototropy will be 
easily possible when there is no electron releasing nature coming from the para position at all if this electron releasing nature is not there this tautomerization can be easily possible and that is what we can see when we are going to change those t butyl isopropyl ethyl and methyl groups this corresponds very well to the explanation given by the baker nathan effect or by hyperconjugation that prototropy we can explain as geomethane using this hyperconjugation all the next type of totemerism we have here is called an inotropy and uh, as we understand in the prototropy the h plus ion was moving from one atom to another atom in an inotropy there will be one anion which will be moving from one atom to another atom basically this is movement of any of the atom or a group of atom the mostly seen type of tautomerism was where we have been seeing hydrogen atom was moving this is some another new type of uh, tautomerism we mostly don't see in most of the cases this is also the case where we can have isomerization taking place tautomerization basically that is coming due to presence of some anion anionotropy is the name given so here we have got basically bromine that bromine can be moving on from atom number one onto atom number three so if this is the alpha hydrogen alpha carbon beta carbon and gamma carbon because halogen is present in alpha carbon this is being considered as the alpha isomer or alpha tautomer in this gamma tautomer alpha beta gamma carbons are given so bromine is going to be present on the gamma carbon so this tautomerization when we compare the hyperconjugative stabilization comes again into picture to help us understand this equilibrium will be lying in the favor of which of the isomer so wherever we have got greater extent of hyperconjugative stabilization of a double bond there it is going to be greater value of the uh, proportion of the tautomer so what we see here in this case this double bond is having one methyl group present this methyl group can be giving us some extra stabilization for this double bond over here for this double bond this group is present where there is only one hydrogen this is methyl group this is bromine group no this much stabilization will be possible in this molecule that's why this is supposed to be relatively in greater proportion more than 85 percent of that is supposed to be present in different conditions of the temperature and we have a generalization over here that if you have got more number of methyl groups basically present methyl groups are present on two c double bond c whether this is for the alpha isomer or it is for the gamma isomer if more carbon carbon double bond are present greater hyperconjugative stabilization would be there for the given molecule and if you have got greater hyperconjugative stabilization that is going to be predominant this is more abundant we could say the equilibrium will be basically lying in the favor of the backward reaction so this equilibrium is supposed to be favored in the backward direction rather than it could be going in the forward that is how tautomerization can be explained at least this anionotropy can be explained by the use of hyperconjugative stabilization the next example here we have is about the reactivity of the aldehydes and ketones usually we have been applying the resonance effect and the inductive effect when we have compared the stability of the aldehydes and ketones for their nucleophilic addition reactions which are more by and large most predominant reactions for the aldehydes and ketones so when we have got cyanohydrin formation uh, for any of the aldehydes we have taken here the cases of the uh, alkyl benzaldehydes these alkyl benzaldehydes when they are undergoing reaction for the formation of cyanohydrin then how their reactivities are being modified how their reactivities are being changed again we are going to do some 
substitution on the para position we have put some para alkyl groups so this para alkyl group again if we are applying hyper conjugation we can be getting relatively much easily uh, understandable results the thing is if you have got methyl group then the aldehyde is going to be relatively more stable so this is uh, all about relative stabilization so if you have got the stability of the aldehyde in comparison to benzaldehyde when we are putting methyl then this is more stable aldehyde meaning that this is going to have less reactivity towards any of the nucleophilic reason so if you are having the cyanohydrin formation the equilibrium will be lying in the backward direction because methyl group is going to have better conjugation this conjugation can be going on to the side chain and that side chain can be modifying the reactivity and this is happening up to much greater extent in the aldehyde once the cyanohydrin formation is has taken place no such kind of stabilization would be coming because that uh, the double bond o which was present in the c double bond o which was present in the aldehyde was in conjugation with the benzene ring hyper conjugation with the benzene ring we can say so cyanohydrins are not very easily being formed if the hyper conjugation hyper conjugative stabilization for the given aldehyde is greater because you see if we have got the case uh, of the any of the molecule something like this if you have got more the carbon hydrogen bonds present onto the para position this carbon is going to have its delta positive charge decreased we can say here if you have got more the number of carbon hydrogen bonds something like this then on the c double bond o this is going, if you have got more such kind of carbon hydrogen bonds here we are going to have successively less delta positive charge if this is less delta positive charge this is going to be less reactive for any of the nucleophile to be attacked So when you have got methyl, this is going to be the least reactive. When you have got hydrogen, this is going to be most reactive in the case of the formation of cyanohydrin. And this K equilibrium, which is going to be deciding how much of the product is being formed in comparison to these reactants. So this equilibrium can be favored in the forward direction if you are having the greater positive charge over here and then this nucleophile can be attacking over here here in these molecules hyperconjugative stabilization from these hydrogens possible once this thing has been formed this alkyl group will be exerting no effect another application we can see is dipole moment we can uh, see the values first so we have got formaldehyde acetaldehyde and propionaldehyde you can see every time we are increasing one carbon and if we are going by inductive effect every time one carbon being increased we can have some x amount of difference coming into the dipole moment but if we see the change from formaldehyde to acetaldehyde this is increasing dipole moment but suddenly when we are going from the benzaldehyde to propional uh, sorry from acetaldehyde when we are going to propionaldehyde that is your acetaldehyde and this is propionaldehyde so when we have replaced our methyl group to ethyl group what has happened the value of the dipole moment from 2.72 has been decreased to 2.52 by no any means we can explain this value of the dipole moment from acetaldehyde over here to propionaldehyde over here without taking hyperconjugation into our consideration so see what was happening when we have seen the cases of the uh, formaldehyde if you are going for inductive effect alone we can possibly explain this result but this result cannot be explained that result is coming only and only for the hyperconjugative stabilization so you can also see from uh, formaldehyde to acetaldehyde why this has been increased because once we are going to have here 
the hyperconjugate stabilization this bond is going to polarize much more easily so hyperconjugative stabilization is going to help polarize this bond up to much greater extent polarity is going to increase from 2.72 2.27 to 2.72 from formaldehyde to acetal Dehyde. This is basically modifying the bond length as well over here. This is modifying the polarity as well here. That's the reason why we are getting the this kind of change in the values of the dipole moment that is increasing force and then it is going to decrease. This is something which we definitely need hyperconjugation to get it explained. Right? Next, the next application we are having about the absorption spectra of the methylethenes basically alkenes we are talking about and we have done all the substitution of hydrogen by methyl groups so when we do so the situation is as the number of methyl groups are increasing how the values of the wave number is going to change basically we are doing the ionization of these methylethenes we are getting them converted into the carbocations by loss of one of the electrons so the excitation will be requiring energy how much energy we need that is being measured in the term of the wave number onto the plotted onto the y-axis over here and onto x-axis is the number of the methyl groups present on the ethene so we'll see as the number of methyl groups are increasing the wave number is decreasing and in a fashion which is related very easily with the extent of delocalization or the extent of conjugation so we are starting with this uh, ethene when there is no substitution that is first thing the wave number for the energization is quite higher putting one of the methyl groups on this that is propene the wave number is decreasing drastically and this keep on changing further but as we move on further the change is becoming successively smaller and smaller so anyhow when we are going to increase the number of methyl groups then we can see the wave number is decreasing continuously first thing and that will mean that electrons are being excited with the relatively lesser amount of energy with relatively lower amount of energy now if you go back and check why electrons can be delocalized much more easily probably these would be less tightly held electrons or these may be relatively loosely held electrons so if these are loosely held electron that means electrons must not be present at the same position in a localized fashion they must be the kind of delocalized electrons that is how absorption spectrum of methylene can be explained and here we have got the case where the ionization energy of alkyl benzenes can be explained in the similar fashion so we have got a phenyl ring and now we have got the different alkyl groups present in that and as you change the alkyl groups how the excitation energy is changing you see when you have got zero alkyl groups present the amount of energy required to excite those uh, those molecules to get it uh, into ionized like loss of one electron you have got quite higher amount of energy required this is the molecule when it was in ground state and now when you have got one methyl group present that's toluene 9.6 electron volt energy is required you put four such groups onto any of the alkyl benzenes the value of the energization energy is going to decrease much much further and if you have got your molecules present in the excited state then the energy can again be related in a similar fashion so what we can say in the ground state whether you have got plus h effect or you have got plus i effect inductive effect and hyperconjugative stabilization both the effects in the case of alkyl benzenes are going to increase their energies if the molecules are in the ground state but if your molecules are going to become in the excited state that is your radical cation formation is going to happen then in comparison to unsubstituted benzene ring energy of system is supposed to be increasing by plus i effect because plus i effect will be pushing electron towards itself it can be increasing the energy but hyperconjugation can be stabilizing as we learned in the carbocations hyperconjugative effect can be decreasing the energy by stabilizing effect here is the uh, relative energy profile diagram 
for this thing what we are just uh, talking about right now this is the ground state and this is supposed to be some hypothetical state if our alkyl benzene is having the inductive effect and hyperconjugative effect coming into picture hyperconjugation can be increasing the energy of our ground state which can be calculated value of the ground state or you can say hypothetical value of the ground state of our given molecule we can also think if there are no any substituent present on the alkyl benzene it is just a phenyl group and series double bond ch2 nothing else if it is present then we will have or just a phenyl ring is present no any other group is present no alkyl group is present this is the reference value that's ground state energy and if there are alkyl groups coming one by one then inductive effect will be modifying the energy as well as hyperconjugation will be modifying the energy here it may be something uh, related with this uh, electrons delocalization like what is giving electron mode effectively and because of this however electron density is going to increase in the benzene ring when the alkyl benzene and then with respect to ground state if you go to the excited state when your molecule is gaining energy in the excited state when you have provided this energy into any of the forms the hyperconjugation is going to change the energy of the excited state that this will try to get it stabilized into the uh, lower energy side but if you have got their inductive effect this can be having little bit uh, energy of the excited state it can be increasing because of the electron pushing effect so the thing is as you have seen when you have got more and more alkyl groups coming these all effects inductive effects or hyperconjugation can be operating they can be exerting their effects and the results what we see was as you are increasing the number of alkyl groups here it was the zero number of alkyl groups present in the beginning and as we are increasing the number of alkyl groups the energy of the ground state is becoming successively uh, this is becoming successively changed basically the this is the amount of the excitation energies electrons can be excited with much lower value amount of energy in comparison to that molecule which is having no any methyl groups present over here where we have shown these zero uh, methyl groups are present onto the phenyl ring so uh, these are the uh, other applications which have been discussed or suggested in the baker nathan's original paper or the papers immediately after which were referring to the baker nathan's effect these all different applications were related with the basically baker nathan effect directly although there were some other effects also explained using a similar uh, similar mechanism of the baker nathan effect like one is high heat of hydrogenation for the alkenes that will be keeping in some different session later in the applications so in the next part after this uh, applications we will be uh, talking about the uh, this is ionization energy for the alkyl benzenes as well we can see we have uh, we, when we have got benzene this is the value of the ionization energy and as you are putting alkyl groups when you are putting one of the methyl groups the energy is changing energy is basically decreased from 9.24 to 8.92 and when you are putting further these uh, groups like uh, two methyl groups we are putting then their relative ionization potential is remaining almost similar very small difference would be coming but this is remaining almost 8.3 and if you note the values the relative differences in the alkenes when you are putting substitution like one methyl two methyl groups versus when you are putting this on the benzene in the benzene putting extra methyl groups is bringing in relatively smaller effect and the reason is explained on the basis of that benzene ring is already stabilized so when you are putting these methyl or ethyl groups or, or more than one methyl groups the relative change in energy what could have been coming in its excited state is relatively smaller in comparison to when we have got this open chain compound like alkene there no extra stabilization coming from any resonance kind of effect the hyperconjugation will be giving you sole stabilizative sole stabilizing effect that's why in the alkenes when you are putting more number of methyl groups you see greater differences in their relative ionization energies in comparison to we can see in this aromatic systems right
that was all in the section these are the references which i used to uh, give uh, all these uh, idea about the applications which were discussed in some of the other papers here are the names of all those papers dz had given one of the chemical reviews and crawford has talked about some of these uh, ionization energies of the alkenes and alkylene genes and even an anotropy we have seen so these are all the cases and all this is all in this action we thank you for watching we'll be talking about in the next session that will be uh, part number four, hyperconjugation part number four mechanism of hyperconjugation we will be talking about how it takes place and our emphasis would be on molecular orbital theory very small uh, basic idea of the hyper of the molecular orbital theory should be required and this will be giving us an insight in our subsequent discussions when we're talking about the applications in detail that why hyperconjugation whenever it is taking place it is associated with the stabilizing effect basically that electron delocalization when this is taking place how this delocalization of electrons is going to change the energy level of our system and how our molecule is becoming relatively more stabilized successively that's all for now thank you bye bye take care keep learning